You know, many times, <clears throat> well, most of all the time, man uh, will say they came up with something new. Uh, yeah, they do. A new revelation. Yeah, they do. Something yeah. they yeah. knew. When in actuality, it's been there all along. They just hadn't seen it before. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So it's not so much it's new, but it's new to them. Yeah. <clears throat> But as, going, as I was going back listening through some of the old camp meeting sermons that we've had over the years, and I, we've been hearing some of them on the radio, <clears throat> I realized something. That the phrase that we hear so much lately about the message of the cross, mm -hmm. we already been preaching that. <laughs> oh, Amen. Come on. They just decided to give it a new name. <clears throat> yeah. Someone said, well, they don't understand why this, someone said it was new. I said, well, it's not new. It may be new to them. But it's as old, it's older than the foundation of the world itself. The message of the cross. The Bible says that the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Amen. It's the foolishness. It's foolishness to those that perish, but it's the power of God. Amen. Unto those of us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. And no more so, because you can see it in all of this book, from Genesis to Revelation, you can see the picture of the cross. The picture of Jesus and His sacrifice. No more so than any other place than in the tabernacle. You can see it there. In every piece of furniture, right down to the very layout of the tabernacle, as you can see here, was laid out in the form of a cross. Right. We're going to pick this up here in the book of Ezekiel. The Lord is giving Ezekiel a vision. A powerful vision. And we're going to see something here. And There's many truths to be gleaned. There's... A lot of gems to be found here. None more powerful than the one that we're going to look at today. I don't know if we'll get through with it or not, but if not, that's okay. How many people like stuff that's continued? Amen? Yeah. Not so much used to when you'd be watching your favorite show and you get right to the dramatic part and it'd say, be continued. You have to wait all week to see it again. Amen? Amen. Come on. But it's always good to have some waiting and expectation wanting more. We might preach for two hours and get it all in this morning or we might have to cut it short. But Ezekiel, the 47th chapter... We find the prophet of God being shown some things by the Lord. And if you'll read the following chapters, you'll find out a little bit more about it. But the meat of what we want to look at is found in the 47th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, beginning in the first verse. Ezekiel says, Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. Now if you read, you'll find out that he was at the temple. He was in the temple. That the vision that he was being shown here had to do with the temple, the Holy of Holies, the holy place, the outer court, the temple there. And he said, He brought me to the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. It's important this morning that you... Remember where it is that Ezekiel is seeing this, these waters that would soon be a river. It's important this morning that we know where the waters started, where they went, and how they flowed on out into the rest of the vision here that God will show him. It says he brought me, I'm in verse, four, uh, verse 3, I'm sorry. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. Now this man, that is this angel, no doubt, that is showing him these things. Now he's measuring the water that the prophet sees coming from the temple. And not just from the temple, but the Bible says that it came from under the threshold and it goes down, the Bible mentions it going by the altar. <clears throat> and we'll find here that it went out from, flowed from the temple and it continued to flow on. And this man begins to measure the water as it went forth eastward. He measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Now this starts out, it doesn't maybe it doesn't look like a whole lot of water. You know it doesn't take much water to I started to say make a mess, but it doesn't take much water to spread pretty quick. Amen. Amen. You can spill a cup of water, and by the time you clean it up, you're thinking, man, was that a gallon or what? Yeah. But it probably started out maybe as a little trickle. Maybe just as a little stream. Right. But by the time we're done looking at this right here, we'll see that it was far wider and far deeper than that. Oh. So the prophet sees this river, these waters, 
proceeding forth out of the temple of God. And this man begins to measure the man with the line in his hand, the Bible calls him. And the prophet says, he brought me through the waters. Yeah. And the waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand. And he brought me through the waters. And the Bible says that the waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand. And he brought me through. And the waters were to the loins. That's getting deeper, isn't it? Wow. Amen. Amen. What started out maybe as just a little stream or just a little water, now it's getting deeper. Right. The prophet said he brought me out through the waters and it was up to my ankles at first. He's getting ready. He's showing us a picture of the grace and the experience of God. It's up to the ankles at first and then it comes up to the knees, I believe it says. Then it comes up to the loins. Amen. And he's not done yet. In verse 5 says, Afterward he measured a thousand. And it was a river. Now where did this start? This river started in the temple. It started in the tabernacle. That's where we began this. The first part of the book. First part of the chapter. I'm sorry. Now he says it's a river. He measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen. Waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed over. From the throne room in the temple, past the altar, but it didn't stop there. It goes out of the temple, and these waters go forth as a mighty river. By the time that Ezekiel's vision is over now, he sees these waters that started in the temple of God and flowed down past the right side of the altar. Now they have proceeded forth out of the temple, out of the tabernacle, and now they, they continue on as a river, deep, wide, one that cannot be passed over. Waters that were to, to the ankle and then to the knee and to the, then to the loin and now waters to swim in a great river. These waters representing the message of Jesus Christ that would come forth out of the throne room. Where did Jesus start at? The Bible says He was God in the flesh. Amen? Right. How many of you will know there's a tabernacle in heaven? Amen. We don't know all of the detail of it. We don't know all of it. We know that it's sort of like what we see here. Uh, Amen? And from the throne room came the Son. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what was the Son's purpose? To die on the altar. It first talks about the water coming from the threshold. Right. Then it says the water went by side of what? The altar. Didn't have to mention that. Right. It mentions that for the specific purpose of knowing that Jesus came for this reason. He left the throne room in heaven. He left the presence of the Father to be the sacrifice for mankind on the altar. But it doesn't stop there. This river didn't stop inside the tabernacle. This river flowed out the opening of the tabernacle. It didn't stop there, but it goes all the way. It, it talks about it flowing forth. And we'll see in a minute how it goes to the wilderness and how it flows forth. And we'll find in the book of Acts to the uttermost parts of the earth. The message of Jesus. The grace that God extends to mankind. Amen. Remember where the waters came from. They came from the temple. They started in the Holy of Holies. They flowed forth by way of the altar. The message of Jesus. God, Son, sent to man. His grace personified so that we could be saved. Yeah. And Ezekiel seeing this magnificent river that proceeds from the temple and goes by way of the altar and comes forth and it just keeps going and it just keeps getting bigger and it keeps growing. The gospel began in Jerusalem but oh, it went to the uttermost parts of the earth. Today it still goes around the globe. Right. The message of Jesus. Amen. This water, this river. When Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, comes to man, sent by the Father. Right. Amen. Oh. To be the sacrifice for mankind. Amen. So these waters represent the grace of God, the gospel, the finished work of the cross. They represent Jesus Christ Himself. You see, you're not going to get away from seeing Jesus on the pages of this book. All right. Amen. True. All the way through the Word of God, from the book of Genesis, whenever God made the <clears throat> animal skins to clothe Adam and Eve, all the way to the book of Revelation where we see Him as the Lamb of God. Right. Amen. Come on. 
You won't get away from the fact that this book is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's read on a little bit farther. Verse 6. The man with the line in his hand is showing Ezekiel the depth and the power of the grace of God. Yeah. And he says in verse 6, And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Right. Now, He's about to tell us something that he didn't mention before simply because before it wasn't there, but now it is. Before he doesn't mention this. What's he say in verse 7? Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. So here we see where the prophet didn't say anything about there being life before. Now there's life. Where he didn't see it say anything about there being trees before, now there are trees. Behold! That's an exclamation. Behold! He cometh. Behold! There were trees on each side of this great river that the prophet was seeing that wasn't there before. Now there is life where there was no life. Now there are trees. And apparently, mature trees. Yeah. He didn't say I saw some little sprouts. Yeah. He said he saw trees on each side of the river. Amen. So life, not just life, but abundant life. Right. Not I saw something, well, I think there might be something going to grow here. But no, from the time that he had been shown the depths of the waters, the depths of the river, mm -hmm. and returned, brought back to the brink of the river, he says, now I see, behold, yeah. I see trees. One, on one side of the river and on the other side of the river. Come on. And verse 8 says this. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea. Which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. Verse 9 says, And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Why? Because these waters shall come thither. Why were there trees there now where there were no trees before? Because of the river that came forth from the temple of God. Because of the river that flowed down on the right side. Was it the right one? Flowed down by the altar. Amen. Because of this river that proceeded out of the temple of God, now there was life where there was no life before. Amen. Hold on. Buckle up. It said, Whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. There shall be a great multitude of fish because the, what these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed. Oh, and I love this next statement. Yeah. And everything shall live, whether the river cometh. Amen? Wow. If you have that in the Bible, in your Bible today, read that last part with me, beginning with and every. And everything shall live, whether the river cometh. What river? The river that proceeded out of the temple of God, that began up here, flowed down by the altar, and came forth and went out into the wilderness of the desert and went for, to the will find to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Because it signifies the river, Jesus Christ Himself, that came forth out of the presence of God Almighty. Amen. That came forth as God in the flesh and died on the altar and from the altar. You think it's a coincidence this morning that Brother Sleece mentioned the water and the blood flowing from the side of Jesus? I got that scripture up here on these papers. I didn't say nothing to Brother Sleece about it, but I've got that scripture up here on these papers. Amen? Amen. Jesus, the living water, when He died on the cross of Calvary, the birth of the gospel, that river would begin to flow and flows today. For whithersoever this river will flow, there will be life. There's only one way to have life today, and that's through Jesus.
Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I got news for you. I can speak of ex from experience. Where there was no life, after Jesus came, there was life. Amen. Where there was no joy, after Jesus came, there was joy. Hallelujah. This river that the prophet sees flowing through the temple of God, a picture of Jesus his finished work on the cross, the grace that would be shed abroad to all mankind. And whithersoever this river goeth, there would be life. He came for one reason, Brother Dave. He didn't come to please people. Amen. We got a lot of people people pleasing people today. Uh, preachers. Amen. And people. Got a lot of people pleasing preachers. Exactly. Amen. We'll make sure they don't offend nobody. Yeah. I took a little bit of heat this week for some comments I made on the Pope. Hallelujah. You know, they were all over there waiting for the smoke to yeah. turn, white. turn white or whatever. Amen. However that works. Uh -huh. And I told them this. We didn't know who the man was going to be. Amen. Uh -huh. But this one thing we knew for sure. When the smoke cleared, uh -huh. whoever they picked would carry on the same damnable doctrine that the Catholic Church has carried on for years. Amen. Uh -huh. There is no redemption in counting your beads. There is no purgatory for someone to pay or pray you out of. There is no power in praying to Mary or the saints. Amen. There is only one way to God, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. There is no vicar of Christ on earth. Right. Not the way they mention Him in the Catholic Catechism. Amen. Right. Someone said, "Well, that just means He's He represents Christ." Not in their doctrine and tenets of faith. It doesn't. That means He is Christ on earth. He's over the church. He has complete headship and authority. There is but one head of the church and that's Jesus Christ, the Amen. Son of the living God. Amen? Absolutely. So if you're waiting for us to quit preaching that Jesus is the only way, it's going to be a long, long wait for you. Amen? Amen. It ain't going to get no easier because Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life. Any doctrine, any man, any teacher, any religion that teaches you different is a liar. Right. Amen? Thief and a liar. A thief and a liar. Because Jesus Christ is the only way. Yes. No other way. And we see a picture of Him in these waters that would flow forth from the temple of God. That would become such a great river that the prophet said, couldn't cross over it. Couldn't cross over it. It got so deep and so wide. And whithersoever this river cometh, there will be life. Yes. I, I don't want to be a bearer of bad news for you today. Actually, it's not bad news. It's good news, really. Yes, sir. But your religion will not bring forth life. Come on. Your dogma of, of false doctrine will not bring you life. Amen. The false teachings of man will not bring you life. True. Only Jesus can bring life. More. Amen. Life and that more Abundant, showing us a picture here that everything shall live whether the river cometh. There's an old song that they sing there is a river that flows from God. Amen. There is a fountain that frees the soul from sin. It is impossible to separate the grace and the gospel from Jesus. Right. For without Him there would be no grace or gospel. Amen. Amen. Just as the water that came forth from the rock in the wilderness. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that in, and did all drink, talking about the children of Israel, of the same spiritual drink. Mm -hmm. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Yeah. And that rock was Christ. Amen. We see in the wilderness that rock representing Jesus. Whenever it was spoken to, and then later whenever it was smitten by the rod, it brought forth water. Oh. Life-sustaining water. That rock represented Christ and the only life-sustaining source that there is. Amen? Amen? Then we find Him on the cross, them piercing His side, and blood and water flowing. Amen? Oh. The, what did He tell the woman at the well? Somebody help me. He said, if you drink of the water that I give you, you'll never thirst again. Amen? This water... This river we're talking about today. Oh, this little woman came to the well looking for something to quench her thirst. And we see that in the natural.
natural, but oh, she was more thirsty in the spiritual than she was in the natural. Amen. She done had five husbands, I think, and the one she's with didn't belong to her. Amen. She'd been looking, she'd been searching. That's why you are out there today. You're looking, you're searching, you're thirsty. Everything you drink, oh, it might quench your thirst for a minute or two, but after that, you find yourself thirsty again. Amen. Jesus comes along, sits down on Jacob's well, and here comes this woman he's got an appointment with. Amen. And she comes to the well with her bucket like she always has. She's going to get us some water like she always does. Amen. But today, she's going to leave her old water pot behind because she's going to get filled with that river that flowed forth from the temple of God. Hallelujah. Because whithersoever this river cometh, there would be life. This woman, she was dead spiritually, but the river was flowing by that day. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. This river had was coming by her way. She needed more than the well. She needed a life-giving river. Hallelujah. And there he sat on the well that day. Drink of me. Amen. Drink of me. Drink of me. This river would flow by Lazarus' tomb. Yeah. Amen. And his sister would come out and say, Oh, he's dead, Lord. I wish you'd have been here. And Jesus would say, he'll live. She said, oh, sure he will in the resurrection. And he said, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The river that came from the throne room, standing there in front of Martha, said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Whithersoever this river floweth, whithersoever this river cometh, there will be life. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my goodness. On, Hallelujah. He would stop a funeral procession. All right. Little widow woman. They got her son dead there. She's weeping and crying. Uh -huh. They're bringing her, bringing him through the city. Yeah. Everybody's crying and moaning. Feel sorry for her. Jesus walking by and says, Hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. He said, Son, get up. Whithersoever the river floweth. Mm -hmm. Whithersoever the river cometh. Come on. Amen. Whether soever the river cometh. Yes, and you know what happened? That boy got up off of his got up out of his coffin. I used that kind of language so we can understand it better. Yeah. He'd walk into one of our funerals and he'd say, What's going on here? Come on. Amen. Get up. Amen. Whether soever the river cometh, there shall be life. Right. Amen. <laughs> Anybody else seeing that this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. How about the centurion's daughter? Yeah. He would run to Jesus and he would say, Oh, my daughter's sick. Would you please come? Mm -hmm. And they, while he's talking to her, the woman with the issue of blood comes. Yeah. Amen. Come Jesus stops because she's touched the hem of his garment. Right. Listen yeah. to him. Whithersoever the river cometh. Somebody said, Whithersoever the river cometh. Whithersoever the river cometh, there will be life. She heard this river was passing by. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she gets down on her hands and knees and she crawls and makes her way to the hem of his garment. And she grabs hold of him and guess what happens? Life. Amen. She's been losing her life drop by drop. Day after day, the Bible says the life is in the blood. Amen. Right. She's been bleeding for 12 years. That's right. But the river flowed by. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. The river flowed by. The, the river flowed by. Hallelujah. And while he's doing all that, somebody comes and says, Hey, your daughter's dead in a doornail. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Don't trouble him no more. Come on, breathe. Jesus goes on. Yeah. He winters the room there. And the mourners are there. They're crying and weeping. Mm -hmm. You know, back in those days, they paid people to mourn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been to a few funerals where I thought you might need to do that around here. <laughs> Everybody's laughing, joking, talking about what's for lunch. Amen. Right. Which has better than sitting around moaning blues, I'm sure. But I just thought that was a little thing that they had to pay people to mourn. Right. Right. Disrespectful. So he comes into the room and he says, All you people get out. Right. Amen. All the doubters you can leave. Right. The river just flowed through the door. Right. Oh. He walks over to that little girl. She's laying there. And she's dead on the door now. They're drying. But Jesus said, Talitha, come here. <clears throat> Which being interpreted as damsel to rise. Whithersoever the river cometh, there is life. Amen. What happened, Brother Billy? Did Jesus walk out of there moaning the blues? 
He walked out of there, probably holding on to the hand of that little girl. <laughs> Whithersoever the river cometh, life comes with it. Amen. Whithersoever Jesus comes, life comes life. with it. Yeah. If you're out there today and you are dead, you're deader than Lazarus was. You have no hope. You have no peace. Oh, if you'll just open up your life to this river. If you'll just accept Jesus Christ. Oh, the sacrifice that He made. Put your faith in the sacrifice that He made. Right. Put your faith in this river. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't have to be dead spiritually any longer. Come on, say it. Back to the woman at the well. I got ahead of my notes. <laughs> After Jesus got through talking to her, I might have mentioned it, but the Bible says she left her water pot. Water pots was important. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah, she left her water pot and she ran back to the city and said, "Come see a man who told me all my read all my mail." Yeah. Amen. Come see a man. Because she's standing there talking and said, "What? You don't have no, you don't have no bucket. How you gonna get me something to drink? Yeah. I know Messiah's gonna come one of these days." Yeah. He said, "I am He." I am the river. Right. I am the water. Amen. Drink of me. Yeah. Drink of me. Oh. Somebody say, drink of me. Drink of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And everything shall live, whether the river cometh. Amen. Oh. Everything shall live. This woman goes away living for the first time in her life because now she has really got the drink of water she's been looking for. Amen. Yeah. You try to quench your thirst with women today, it ain't going to happen. Come on. Amen. You might wind up with something deadly. All right. Amen. In more than one way. Right. You may try to quench your thirst with booze. That's right. You can drink all the alcohol that's ever been brewed. And you're still going to be miserable as hell itself and still just as thirsty. Exactly. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Amen. Everything shall live whether the river that's cometh. Right. Amen. Where Jesus is. <laughs> There is life. Amen. Amen. If you're trusting in anyone or anything else, it's not going to end up good for you today. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. There's only one way to have life. You don't have to be dead today. You don't have to be wow. sick today. You don't have to be miserable today. Wow. You don't have to be joyless today or wow. peaceless today or, or without hope. Amen. Wow. You don't have to be hopeless today. Because where the sword of this river comes, there is life. In places where you thought there could, it was impossible. Yeah, right. It's impossible. There'd never be no life come from this. Right. This is a desert. This is a wilderness. Anybody ever felt like he's in the wilderness or the desert? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, but where this river flows, wilderness or not, there will be life. Amen. Oh, whithersoever this river comes, life will spring yes, sir. forth. And you Amen. find it all throughout his life. The blind would see. Uh -huh. The deaf See, dead eyes would come to life. Right. Dead ears would come to life. Amen. Dead legs. That's right. Amen. Do you remember the little man that was waiting by the pool, oh, waiting for the here. waters to be troubled? Yes. Amen. Yeah. He said, I've been trying to get down there, but right. I can't. Right. See, you've been trying. Right. You've been trying to get good enough, but you can't. Yeah, there you go. You've been trying to get everything worked out, but you just can't do it. Amen. I'll wait till everything's just right before I come. Amen. But something always stops me. Something always kept. I always fall short until one day he's sitting there, knowing how many times he's tried to make it himself. <laughs> and he looks over and sees some feet of a man. And he looks up. And Jesus says, Wilt thou be made whole? He said, well, I would, but I can't get to the water. <laughs> he didn't know the water was standing there talking to him. Amen. <laughs> and whithersoever this river flows, there would be life. And this man would walk because the river came to him. There is salvation to be found today because the river came to us. Yes, sir. Amen. Because the river came to us. Absolutely. His message, His finished work, yes. His gospel. Amen. That's the only place to find life today. Yes. You can crawl into your closet with the screen water on one side every Saturday night or Sunday morning mm. 
and you confess your sins to the man with the white collar, yeah. you'll still die and split hell wide open. Come on. You must go to the river. Amen. You must go by way of Jesus Christ Amen. or you will not go. There is no compromising that. But Brother Billy, you need to be a little bit more. There's no compromising that. Right. If I'm going to compromise that message, Brother Billy ain't going to preach no more. Come Amen. On. If you think today you can win your friends and family by compromising, let me ask you this. What are you really winning them to? Mm. Amen. What are you really winning them to? Mm. A life of compromise? One like the rest of the church of the day that we live and sits around and says, you're okay. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. As long as you believe that there's a higher power, as long as you believe that there's a God up there somewhere, amen, you don't have to believe in Jesus, just believe something. Yeah, damning people to hell. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. You have to come through Him. I didn't write the book, amen. And whithersoever this river cometh, you can be healed today. Why? Because everything shall live whether the river cometh. You can have victory today. Why? Because everything shall live whether the river cometh. You can have life and life more abundant. Why? Because everything shall live whether the river cometh. Amen. Yeah. Revelation 21 and 6 says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 22 and 1 says, And he showed me, Oh, listen to this. Don't miss this. Get your tablet back out if you put up your notes. Hmm. I am closing. But he says in Revelation 22 and 1, and he showed me a pure river yeah. of water of life. Come on. Clear as crystal. Right. Where's it coming from? Proceeding out of the throne of God Amen. and of the Lamb. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Where did, where did Ezekiel's river come from? It proceeded out of the throne room. All right. Amen. Well, Here in the book of Revelation, John sees a river, water of life. And where do we find life? There is but one place to find life, and that's Jesus. Does he have to draw us a picture? Amen. Jesus, this river, this water of life. Come on, breathe. John sees it proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Right. There had to be a lamb. There had to be a sacrifice in order for this river to flow forth. John said he saw him as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So if you think today that the message of the cross is a new thing, oh, I beg to differ. Amen. It's been around since before the foundation of the world. Right. Amen. My, my, my. Whithersoever this river flows, there will be life. Amen. Amen. Revelation 22 and 17 says this, and I'm closing, I promise. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is a thirst, and whosoever will, let him drink. Let him take, I'm sorry. Let him take the water of life freely. You hear that? Psalms, the first chapter. You don't have to go there because I'm going to hit this real quick. This is the ending. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. What's it say next? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf shall not wither, and whosoever and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. These rivers of water, talking about the life-giving source, Jesus Christ, amen, you'll be like a tree planted, if you, as long as you're planted by those rivers of water, as long as you're in Him and He's in you. Jesus said that you have to abide in Him. You must abide in the vine. Because you can't do nothing of yourself. You can't bring forth fruit unless you're connected to the, the life-given source. Amen? You have to get the water. You have to be connected to this river in order to bring forth fruit. He said, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye shall abide in me. Amen? Amen? He is the river. Yes. Amen. Right. <laughs> and wherever the river flows, there will be life. Everything shall live, whether the river cometh. Amen. Amen. My goodness, that's good, ain't it? Yes. Amen. I'll leave you with this this morning. The only reason because there, in that part there where it says, this week in our school and we were writing our Bible <laughs> scriptures. 
The scripture we wrote was, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. Brother Isaac was writing his. And he said, that Lord is capital L-O-R-D. He said, I'm going to write it like that. I said, yeah, because we don't want to change God's word, do we? He said, no. He said, he said exactly. That's what his word is. Amen. And he said, other people may change God's word, yeah. but we won't read it, will we? Come on. I wish we had some adults as smart as kids. Amen. Amen. Other people might change it, but we won't read it, will we? Amen. Oh, if you're clinging to any other message today besides Jesus, yeah. you're in trouble. Right. He is the only source of life. He is the river right. that proceeded from the throne of God to the altar of the cross. Oh. And from there the gospel was spread abroad to the uttermost right. parts of the earth. True. And whithersoever this gospel... See, there's no, there's no life to be found in the gospel of works, right. the gospel of Mary, Come on. the gospel of Buddha or whatever. Right. Only through the gospel of Jesus Christ and His finished work can life be found. Amen. And wherever this river flows, there will be life. Yes. Anyone else have something this morning?